Welcome back here with Goldberg. Today I'm going to be addressing a request, and that is to consider the case of Roosh V and his transformation from a PUA into a traditionalist Christian. Is it legit? Is it another angle for grifting? Is it a midlife crisis? I'm going to argue it's actually a fusion of different things. And, you know, just for those of you who don't know, Roosh V started travel and date vlogging, I think around 06, 07 in his late 20s, because he wasn't doing very well with the females in the United States, as many men do not. But by his own admission, he didn't exactly start crushing it abroad. Uh, he kind of admitted that in some blog posts, and Aaron Sleazy also had content confirming it. But at any rate, Roosh always has been a kind of cynical, sardonic personality, almost like a people watcher. And if you're spending copious amounts of time uh, hitting on drunk chicks or buying drinks for women, whichever it might be. And just as an aside, probably deserves its own video how some PUAs think that plying women with alcohol or drugs is a sign of uh, their game skills. That's just hilarious to me in a very grim way. But if you're looking at these people and you're hanging out with them, it's probably not going to enhance your opinion of humanity. I believe Rouge, throughout his travels, it simply made him more of a cynic and he had less hope of being able to successfully find the perfect woman, whatever that might actually be. This is something we might want to appreciate a little bit better because it's interesting, there's a quote from Mussolini who is believed to have slept with like 400 women, which by modern standards isn't even that much, I guess, but he said that he was talking about the sex act and he said something to the tune of, Women are the ones who actually gain satisfaction from it. They're filled. Uh, it exalts them. They walk away feeling, you know, like they've actually been enhanced in some sense. And of course, they might get pregnant and have kids. So there's even more to that. Whereas the guy is just sort of dejected and depressed afterwards. Um, and to be honest, if you look at pumping and dumping, how much real satisfaction does that give to a guy? Like, the anticipation to having sex, the sex itself, the foreplay is good. But afterwards, you know, it's kind of like, okay, what was the point? You have almost lost a part of yourself. In fact, in some senses, you have lost a part of yourself. Now, we have to give the obligatory allowance for the influx of uh, virgin and incel comments. Cope, cope, cope. Which, you know, nothing wrong with being a virgin or an incel, but there's a lot of these guys, they don't have experience with women, and they project that onto everyone else. So if you don't, like, fixate on getting laid all the time because you don't have a tr uh, trouble getting laid, they can't accept that, and they, they have to constantly try to stir up issues. But seriously, if you spend most of your time doing that, yeah, you get some ego boost, you might have some bragging rights, but what long-term benefit do you actually extract. That's the difference between uh, engaging in sex with someone on just a casual basis and then of course someone that you know you have a, a bond of, someone who might be the mother of your children, if you believe in that stuff, which I know is debatable. But the point is, I could see how Roosh may have just been driven more into a state of, you know, I'm not going to be able to find anyone, it's all BS. In fact, he wrote an article about why he probably wouldn't get married and his requirements for women were so ridiculous, like she can't sleep in the same room. She's got to observe this, that, or the other. Obviously, if you go too far down this red pill or black pill rabbit trail, you might, in fact, just get to the point where you overanalyze and overthink, and you're, you're going to constantly find imperfections with whoever you're uh, interacting with on a romantic basis. So that could become an issue, certainly. Now, with that being said, as far as his shift to taking the God pill, becoming a Christian, he did say he had some experiences with drugs and then also the death of his sister, which nudged him in that direction. Um, you could say, well, he's still just kind of coping because it's a midlife crisis. We have to stop thinking of a midlife crisis as necessarily a bad thing. It's just a recognition of the fact that our mortality is immediate, right? We know that. You don't get to just reload the game, do the quick save. So a lot of people start questioning, have I accomplished enough in life? You know, am I where I need to be at this point? Um, especially as they get closer to the middle, uh, or at least if you're healthy, you live long, it's the middle. 
I've started thinking myself that I need to take more seriously the political route if I want to go in that direction. But I kind of need like an advanced man or a greaser just for the social and fundraising settings because I can be outgoing, but I'm not like really garrulous, I guess. So having someone to, to make those connections could be beneficial, certainly. But at any rate, you see this quite a great deal. I mean, I think it was David D'Angelo did the same thing, Neil Strauss, Cernovich, who promoted a bunch of really vile content, like choking women, uh, how to have sex with trannies, all of a sudden it's like, you know, a nice guy, dad, supportive family man. So you have to consider, depending on how far down the rabbit hole you go, a guy like Roosh, I think, was blackpilled long before everyone else, but he didn't admit it because his revenue depended on being kind of a red pill promoting pickup. But if you get into this stuff too long, especially as a business, it can be hard to extract yourself because your entire revenue stream is based upon promoting a certain ideology or lifestyle that as you get to be older, maybe you want a family, it's harder to do that with any degree of legitimacy. A family man promoting pump and dump doesn't really make any sense. Let's just be real. So if you're going to get into the manosphere and you're going to try to profit off of it, think about down the road what you're going to be doing. These guys who are in their middle age trying to promote, you know, having sex with women, it's just cringy and it's unconvincing. Unless you look like the guy who can get women, you just look like, you know, you're really trying hard to ignore the realities of aging. Now, for Roosh, we have to acknowledge he did unpublish most of his How to Have Sex books. So he lost revenue streams. He's not like trying to still make money off of it while claiming he's changed. And he also, on his forum, he banned discussion of trying to hook up and such. So ultimately, you're not going to know the heart of the person, but people can change. People do have legitimate uh, experiences in life which could change their perspectives. So I don't want to write it off entirely. Although I do think it's, again, that question of, if you get involved with this Manosphere stuff, what is the long-term goal? Are you going to be the kind of crusty dude promoting MGTOW in his 70s to the internet? Are you going to still be trying to do pickup, or is it going to be a transitional thing? I've always said, you know, red pill, black pill, it is a first step. But it's not, you know, checking out of life entirely and forgetting about the real world. So just remember... You can take truth from it, but don't let it cloud your judgment to the point where the internet becomes real life and becomes, you know, for the foreseeable future, your entire existence.